Fantasmic is back at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and after a couple weeks, so is the Fantasmic Dining Package. It's even at some new locations that it was never at before, so we set out to try as many of them as possible. So myself and Kevin went on over to the Sci-Fi Dine-In, and we also had dinner at the Hollywood Brown Derby. Meanwhile, Eric Morton and Alessa went over to 50's Primetime Cafe with Jake, and Jason and some friends went over to Mama Melrose's at the studios to try out the package there. Only one missing from this review is Hollywood and Vine, but the good news is we did review every single meal you can have in a day at Hollywood and Vine already in a different video here on the channel. Go watch that out and just apply the, these phantasmic dining package thoughts with that uh, if you want to know how that one goes. But here we go. Here's four different versions of the phantasmic dining package we did all in one day. Look at that spooky uplighting. Don't I look great, everybody? Look at me. All right, so for appetizers, we did two of the most ubiquitous appetizers, the onion rings, of course, and then the fried pickles. The same sauce came with both, right? It's the horseradish, horseradish and, and I think they call it onion ring sauce? Mm -hmm. Yeah, essentially, I'm gonna try pickle. <laughs> I don't always get the pickles. We always get the onion rings, though. Pickles are solid. And they're enjoyable, but where it's at. The onion ring is where it's at. They're salty, they're crunchy. The sauce is perfect. They're fantastic. All right, for entrees, we're trying something new. I got the Impossible Burger. Yes, that is a giant mushroom on the top of that. It still comes with the, for my money, the best fries at Disney World. And then you got the salmon pasta, right? Yes. Yeah. Salmon pasta. We're gonna see how we're gonna see how this goes. All right, Impossible Burger up first. <laughs> It's not bad. I mean, the, the big, thick mushroom is very good. I'm a big mushroom guy. We've talked about it before. And uh, I know it's one of the better Impossible Burgers. I, think. I forget what's in the Impossible Burger. It tastes real grainy. So if you like a grainy flavor palette, I think you'll like it. If you don't, you may not. But if you're ordering an Impossible Burger instead of a real burger, I mean... You know, there's only so many options to begin with, right? But I think it's pretty solid. It's giant also, and it comes with, again, what I think are the best French fries at Disney World. May I try your pasta? There's salmon chunk over there. Is there? Yeah, they're spread out. There's a little bit of pasta. There you go. All right, salmon pasta. Pretty much what I expect, right? The salmon is cooked well. It's nice, flaky, very light. Yeah, Salmon's perfect. Is, that's how for you. Very good, thank you. Um, the salmon is real good. The pasta, I don't know. The sauce is, I don't know. It's, it's that, it's that like cheap Parmesan taste, right? It's like that. It's kind of artificially a bit. Um, it's very rich, maybe over salted. Um, I don't know, what do you think about it? You like it? I would agree with that. The salmon's good. Um, nice hint of lemon. Uh, yeah. And it, you know, the, yeah, the salmon is well prepared. Um, the, the pasta's well cooked. But yeah, it's got that, like, cheap Parmesan cream yeah. sauce kind of kind of taste to yeah, it. Yeah, not... I mean, overall, for, for a pasta dish, it's... It's better than Tony's. I mean, yeah. I'd eat that before I eat the pasta at Tony's or Mama Melrose, for that matter, so... But it's just weird, because if, if you want something lighter, like salmon... You're, you're getting all this heaviness. If you get the pasta offsets in anyway. Yeah. There you go. 
We've got our tickets for Fantasmic. They're stapled together as our showtime, the date, and then a bunch of little reminders on the back. There we go. Hello, everybody. Eric Martin with WWNT. Um, you know what I hate about Fantasmic? You wait in line, and then you wait in line again, and then they herd you into a theater, and you sit there forever, and then they make you slide down. All these things I don't like. I'm not good at those things. What I am good at is eating, paying a little extra money, and then getting the dining package so that you get you know, guaranteed seating in the theater. So we are gonna try out, uh, it's our first day here at Disney Hollywood Studios of the dining package for Fantasmic. I'm here with my crew. Uh, Jake is behind the camera, of course. Alessa is here. Hi. Hello, Alessa. <laughs> and we're gonna eat here at 50's Prime Time. The deals are not bad. It's not like it's a bunch more expensive than a normal meal here. Okay. And then <laughs> we also get uh, preferred seating for Fantasmic. So let's go, let's give it a shot. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I don't know if they need to know that. I'll be right back. Okay, so we are seated. The uh, the shtick here is that you are visiting relatives who are often disappointed in you, which is kind of a specialty I was of say, mine. Maybe that's like normal. I'm right in my element. Um, so you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. So if I'm looking through here right now, appetizers are ten to twelve dollars. The entrees are twenty six, twenty eight dollars, uh, and then the desserts. Uh, they hover around eight to ten dollars. So I think it's fifty one dollars for this. It's not like you're getting It's not like they're really gouging you any worse than normal food prices yeah. here and you get a, a Preferred seating for Fantasmic. So what we'll do is we'll come with a strategy on how to swap appetizers and okay, desserts yes, See which sure. one can feed two <laughs> That's and a good one. See how it goes. <laughs> So I, I, I misspoke earlier. Each person gets an appetizer or dessert yeah. and an entree. So the strategy here is, can we get an appetizer <laughs> that kind of satisfies the table, and then can we get a couple desserts? That's the strategy we went with. That's the best strategy. We've got a couple go desserts with. coming at the end, so we're gonna we're gonna get the uh, fried herb and garlic cheese for ten bucks. Because it's cheese. Uh, well, it's included. It's, it, um, it's cheese, right? So we're gonna split that. Each of us got our entree. I got fried chicken. Alessa got the. Pie. I was told it's like one of the best things on the menu, so we'll see. I have no idea. And take out a sample. Uh, and then we're, we'll be free at the end for two different desserts, and we're kind of looking forward to that. So, uh, again, it's not a terrible waste of money, no. right? You're, you, yeah, it's it's a dining experience meal. And I like awesome. the vibe already, and like Chris, our server, he's fun already. Yeah. Like, you know, that like push and shove kind of vibe that I feel like this place has. I didn't get told they were disappointed in me. This is the first. <laughs> not yet. We have a long way to go. Before. I'm just prepping for Christmas, Dad. <laughs> table because I'm the youngest so I'm going to attempt this I feel like I don't know there's like a way to put like the knife and the fork on the right side my mom would be so disappointed in me right now but that's the theme of the day so I'm just going to attempt this. <laughs> sorry part of my reach I feel like there's some inconsistency in the way you're saying there it. is inconsistency but I feel like our server is going to give me enough of that so I don't need to hear from you too uh, <laughs> I think the cutting edge of the knife goes towards the plate, does, does but I, I don't okay. know that for sure. So. Well, then, I think I, I don't I, I, mm, I think you did a good job. I give you a C. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, this is the best I can do. I'm so sorry. That's the, uh, fried herb and garlic cheese. Are about the our, our food is here. The cheese is gone. The cheese was pretty good. <laughs> the cheese was pretty good. It was um, I have the <laughs> I have the fried chicken, mashed potatoes. There you go. Uh, Alessa got the pot, pot pie, pie which pot I pie. thought it was gonna be like an actual pie, but it's like this is the crusty bit, and then it's. That's like the better, inside. right? You can just dip it. Yeah, in I actually that. like it. Oh, I haven't tasted it, but it looks good. Now, if you're if you're that guy, you do what Jake did, <laughs> and you just get the sampler and get everything. You got meatloaf. You got chicken, you got pot roast, the full thing. You better eat your green beans. Eat those green beans. It's the only green <laughs> thing here, basically. Yeah. Like, this is a very tan meal. Yes. Right? <laughs> 
All right, so we're done eating. I have to say, my fried chicken was delicious. It tastes kind of like the fried chicken at Hoop Dee Doo Review. I think Jake agreed with his fried chicken. Alessa, you had the pot pie, how was that? Yeah, very good, super filling, lots of flavor. Um, our server said like you won't be disappointed. I was not, so like I'm glad I went with his review. Everything so far is a, a pretty good thumbs up. Um, we're on to dessert now. So we got uh, Dad's favorite chocolate peanut butter layered cake a la mode. So I see ice cream uh, here. And then the grasshopper bar. I have to say, this looks amazing. I took a bite of it. It didn't blow me away. Me, I don't know. I'm not a mint fan. I like it. I just didn't taste anything. But like it that's like I, nothing. Like I didn't even get that much mint, and I'm not a mint. Like usually I'd be like, oh, I hate that, but I don't hate it because I'm not getting super like minty flavor. But there's also like a crust, and I didn't taste a crust. Yeah, I like your grandpa. Yeah, it's okay, good. Okay, I didn't taste. And it. that that mint flavor, it did show up. It just took like yeah. 15 seconds, which is weird, right? You eat something and you wait. 15 seconds. They did that Willy Wonka, I think. They like eat the Thanksgiving dinner, like yes. she's chewing the gum, and she's like, oh, wait, that's mashed potatoes and gravy. It's kind of what this was. I had to chew it and eat it and swallow it, and I was like, oh, I think there's a hint of mint there. It tastes like one of those, like, very processed, not in a bad way, but just like very, like, cream based ice creams. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's why it's also holding its shape so well. It's not like, cold, right? It's not no, cold. Like the, yeah. the ala mode, the ice cream yeah. over here. Uh, this is this is delicious, predictably, right? Yeah. Cake and ice cream. I mean, but in general, I actually like this. I just wish it had a little bit more upfront flavor, right? Yeah. It, it just it had me worried for a minute, and even then, it was kind of like a hint of flavor. Like you ever drink one of those uh, seltzers? Was it Lacroix? Yes. And you're like, it doesn't taste like lemon, but it tastes like I drove past a lemon tree while I was drinking the it and smelled it through the window. Yeah. It's the Lacroix of desserts. But uh, it, it, it's not bad. It looks delicious. No, right? and it's light. At least it's like, very you don't light. feel like horrible. But to answer the question, value-wise, this okay. was a good idea Such for us. Good idea. Don't. Yeah. For we could you could pool these. You can obviously this is enough for three people. This is enough for four people. Oh yeah. We could easily have done two appetizers and two desserts and split them because there's plenty there. I think so. So all right. that's a little high. <laughs> This is better. Cake? Get this one. Yeah. This is better than that. Even though I would normally love this. I wish I were mint chocolate chip ice cream. Ooh. I wish I were ice cream on the bottom. It's just kind of a like it's just a, kind of a cream. Yeah, more of a cream than an ice cream. It's good. Alright, so we're all done. Uh, what'd you think? It was good. This was my first time ever experiencing this place. I feel like it's fun, it's different, it's super themed, which I like. And I feel like for like the bang for your buck with the Phantasmic seating and not having to like wait 45 minutes to get good seats, like it's the price is worth it. It's, it's $51 a person. Yeah. I, I don't think that's unreasonable considering we do have our tickets now. Like uh, for money. Fantasmic, so <laughs> we're gonna go try to sell these to people, maybe. I don't know, but uh, no, I think so far so good. I'm I'm impressed with the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. So here we are at Mala Melrose's, and our appetizers have just arrived. We've selected the margarita flatbread, the calamari, and the fried mozzarella. Uh, that was our choice out of, I think, a selection of five or six different possibilities. We thought these might be the most popular ones. Uh, and so we're here to try them for you. First, I'm going to try this margarita flatbread. Here we go. Your server coming in shortly is Ms. Carol. Bathrooms are here. Okay. You're welcome, Dobson. Enjoy. That is a flatbread. Uh, the, the flavor is fine. The crust is kind of not to my liking. It's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of hard. It's not as chewy as I would like these kind of things to be. But the flavor is good. I like the sauce and the cheese. I think this would be a fine option, especially for kids who sort of aren't going to be any, aren't going to eat adventurous things like calamari maybe, this is a good option. Uh, it's also the most expensive one on the menu, uh, so that's part of the reason why we selected it. We figured it would be popular because this 
Fantasmic Dining Package is a prefix offering. So for a set price, you get your choice of entree and either appetizer or dessert. And so we figured people being uh, trying to get the most value for their dollar are going to choose one of the most expensive appetizers. And this one is the most expensive. So it's fine. I wouldn't say it's great. It's, it's serviceable. We're going to try the calamari next. Calamari is the second most expensive appetizer. It's one dollar less than the flatbread. This is interesting. Usually you expect calamari to be kind of rubbery, kind of chewy. This is not at all. It's very soft, almost no texture to it at all. I'm trying to figure out whether that's just an anomaly or whether it's all of it, every piece. None of them are chewy uh, like I expect calamari to be. So if, if you like calamari, the flavor's fine. If you ate, hate the chewiness of calamari, this may be for you because it's not chewy at all. That's a pretty he healthy portion size for an appetizer for one person. You can certainly share that uh, with multiple people. If, for example, one of you wanted to get an appetizer and one wanted to get dessert and you could share both. Um, so I, I, I think it's, a, it's an okay choice. Um, not the greatest calamari I've ever had, but I don't know that you could expect that anywhere in Walt Disney World property. Uh, and lastly, we're going to try the fried mozzarella. There are two sort of planks of mozzarella here. There's the inside. It looks just like you'd expect. This is actually really good. Um, I like the sauce. The sauce has a very, it's almost like crushed tomatoes. It has a very fresh taste to it. The fried mozzarella is very crispy on the outside. It's not soggy at all. It's clearly is cooked fresh and it wasn't sitting around for a long time. Uh, the cheese is mozzarella. It's sort of, it is what it is. Mozzarella is not my favorite cheese. It's not the most flavorful cheese, but this is fine as far as mozzarella goes. So again, I think this would be a very good option for kids, especially if kids are, you know, into mozzarella sticks. Uh, these are sort of mozzarella discs, but uh, overall the flavor's there. And uh, for something like mozzarella sticks, these aren't gonna disappoint. Uh, so I think that's a solid option as well. So there you go, there's the three appetizers. strip steak. It's always a crap shoot when you're going to order something like this in a Disney restaurant that's not known for their steak. This comes with four cheese macaroni with pancetta and aged balsamic shallot butter and then the sauce here is a Chianti wine reduction. So I ordered my steak medium rare um, and it turns out that it's actually pretty well cooked. Um, it's definitely medium rare. It's not overcooked. I almost expected it to be overcooked, um, but it's not. This steak is surprisingly good. Um, it's, it's not 
It's not tough or chewy at all. It's pretty tender, uh, which is a surprise. I don't really like the Chianti wine reduction. It's, it's really kind of sweet. It's almost, it's actually almost like Lee and Heron steak sauce, to be honest. Um, I don't usually put steak sauce on my steak, and I don't really like this Chianti wine reduction, but it is what it is. Uh, we're gonna try the full cheese macaroni and cheese. This is pretty solid too. Um, that's a great flavor. That's a great mac and cheese. Um, I think this should be actually offered as a side uh, or on the kids menu because it's a great mac and cheese. It's got the little cubes of pancetta, which is not something that kids are going to care about. Um, but as far as the cheese sauce, it's actually really good. Very happy with that. So here we are with the uh, mama's, uh, mama's spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, it's just spaghetti meatballs. It's not mama's spaghetti meatballs. It's just spaghetti and meatballs. So we're going to try the spaghetti. That's standard. Nothing unexpected. Pretty plain sauce. Uh, not, not anything very spicy or flavorful about it. Uh, this does, as you saw in the pictures, this does come with four rather large meatballs, which uh, seems seems like a pretty generous portion. So we'll try the meatball next. That's a good meatball. It tastes like there's some cheese, like Parmesan cheese mixed in with the meatball. It's pretty tasty. It certainly is not the sort of standard kids spaghetti and meatballs type of offering those meatballs are pretty tasty um, so this is a this is a decent dish especially for someone with a little bit more finicky palate uh, pretty classic pretty much what you'd expect and no surprises here so this dish is the mama's Italian pasta with chicken uh, read in the description it's fettuccine tossed with roasted tomatoes and garlic artichokes butter and white wine sauce uh, so it's it's um, it's not a tomato-based sauce, although there's a lot of tomatoes in here and crushed uh, crushed in some parts, which make it look like it's a tomato sauce. Uh, but it's supposed to be a white wine sauce. There's a large grilled chicken breast on it, uh, which actually looks pretty good. Looks pretty promising as far as that goes. Uh, so first, we're going to try the chicken. <laughs> Chicken breast is, as you might expect, a little on the dry side. Um, the flavor's fine. It's not the most flavorful chicken, but the seasoning that's on it does add a little bit of flavor. Um, but it, it's just a little bit on the dry side, so not, not my favorite. Uh, we're gonna try the pasta. We'll get some pasta here. We'll get a little grape tomato with it. I think this is kind of lacking flavor. Honestly, I like the spaghetti and meatballs. That had a much more flavorful sauce to it. You don't taste the white wine at all in this, even though they warn you on the menu that it contains an alcohol product. The sauce just isn't that flavorful. Um, I think with you know with enough tomatoes and artichokes, you're going to get flavor in the dish overall. But if you're just going to eat the pasta and the white wine sauce it's not not the greatest sauce it's kind of just lacks lacks any kind of distinguishing feature as far as the flavor goes uh, we're going to try an artichoke just to see how they are i'm fairly certain that's a canned artichoke um, it is what it is it does add a bit of flavor to the dish overall uh, it's a nice addition. I like artichokes, so that's it's nice to see artichokes uh, on the menu. Um, this is fine. Uh, again, it's it's 
other than the artichokes, it's not a very adventurous um, list of ingredients for this dish, so I think it would please most people who, who aren't uh, super adventurous. So here we are with the uh, plant-based uh, option at Mama Melrose's. This is the polenta cake, mushroom, and herb cauliflower dish. There's polenta layered with uh, sauteed mushrooms and spinach. Uh, there's some red peppers in here. And on top of the polenta is a cashew cheese sauce. And then on the side, there's a big chunk of herbed cauliflower uh, that looks like it's roasted. Pretty nice roast on the top there. Uh, so we're going to see how this goes. First, the polenta. That's really interesting. It's a very moist, very moist polenta. Um, I don't really know what to say about it. It's, it's almost like cornbread consistency, I would say. It's, it's very much like a cake. Uh, the, the cashew cheese sauce, I've had cashew-based cheese sauce. Um, this one's not great. I don't know if they were going for more of like an Alfredo kind of style. The ones that I've had are much more like a cheddar or a queso style cashew cheese sauce. Um, this one's okay. It certainly adds some flavor to the polenta, uh, so that's that's welcome. We're gonna try the mushrooms next. The mushrooms are actually really good. I love mushrooms. These got some spice to them. There's a little bit of tomato and onion in there. They're cooked very nicely. Um, and there's a plentiful portion. Uh, there's actually a fair amount of spice to them. I'm getting a little heat on the back end here. So um, the mushrooms, that's a great, great component of this dish. And finally, we're gonna try the cauliflower. This cauliflower is a little mushy. Um, the flavor is good. The roasted, the roasted um, top gives it a good flavor. Uh, it's just a little overcooked. I prefer my cauliflower a little more crunchy, but this isn't bad. Um, I know we've had some plant-based dishes at other restaurants, which are totally inedible. Um, this one's this one's pretty decent for what it is. Uh, so I would I would say. <coughs> one of the better plant-based offerings I've had at Walt Disney World. And here we have the chicken parmesan with spaghetti, uh, one of the more expected dishes at an Italian restaurant at Walt Disney World. You've got a pretty good sized piece of chicken fried with sauce and mozzarella on top, and then you've got a side of spaghetti. And try the chicken. about what you'd expect fairly average it's crispy which is nice um, plenty of plenty of cheese on there uh, the spaghetti on the side I, I'm guessing is the same as the spaghetti and meatballs yeah that's the same as the spaghetti and meatballs so you've got spaghetti and meatballs you've got spaghetti and chicken whatever meat product you like uh, there's also a shrimp option, um, the Mama's Italian pasta, the Mama's Italian pasta with chicken that we talked about also comes as a shrimp option, should have mentioned that earlier. Um, this is going to be a family pleaser for sure, I think, I think chicken parmesan is a pretty popular dish at most restaurants and pretty popular uh, among a lot of a lot of my family members at least, and I know Tom's a big fan of chicken parmesan. This one's fine. This will uh, this will not disappoint as far as, well, as much as any food at Walt Disney World is not going to disappoint, this one's not going to disappoint either. It's not gourmet, uh, but it's fine. And here we are with dessert at Mama Melrose. Uh, we selected two out of the six or seven dessert options available. One is the classic Italian dessert tiramisu. 
Uh, and the other is also somewhat a classic Italian dessert of cannoli. This is a cannoli trio. We have an orange cream cannoli. We have a butterscotch caramel cannoli. And then we have the traditional cannoli with chocolate chips in the middle. We're going to try these. These look the best, the best two desserts out of the bunch. There was a cheesecake that looked pretty good too, but it, the description was a little bit random, and so we opted not to go with the cheesecake. Uh, so first, we'll try the cannoli. That's actually a pretty. Pretty intense taste for cannoli. There's a lot of chocolate in there. Um, almost reminds me of being at Hershey Park. There's so much chocolate in that cannoli. Uh, it's not super boozy, but as you would expect at Disney World, it's not going to be. Um, this, this is tiramisu. You've been saying cannoli. Really? Yes. <laughs> Maybe we should start this one over. <laughs> No, just keep going. This is great. Okay. <laughs> Tiramisu, cannoli. I know which is which. My mouth doesn't know what it's doing. The tiramisu is quite chocolatey. Pretty intense chocolate flavor. Um, it's not very boozy, as likely you would expect at a Walt Disney World restaurant. It's fine for what it is. Uh, the portion size is fairly decent. I've seen portion sizes of tiramisu half this amount uh, there's this chocolate chocolate covered breadstick oh that's not great it's a very hard it's like a breadstick with sugar on it it's very very hard so I think it's supposed to be. It's a biscotti. Dunkin it's coffee. very hard. You dunk it in coffee? If only I had some coffee, I might make this better. I don't like it. It is what it is. Uh, let's move to the cannolis, which I think hold more promise. Uh, we're going to start with the orange creamsicle one here. That's weird. What I don't know is if the orange creamsicle flavor is just on the orange curls at the outside or in, in the filling. So I'm gonna try the filling. It's in there, it's in there a little bit. Um, I'm not an orange creamsicle fan, so I don't like that one too much. We're gonna go with the butterscotch caramel next. That one's good. That one's good. Um, the caramel, the caramel's great. The butterscotch is a bit, a bit of a fake flavored butterscotch, kind of like the uh, butterscotch chips you can get for cookies at the grocery store. It's kind of a fake butterscotch flavor. Uh, the caramel's good. If that was just caramel and no butterscotch, I think that would be fantastic. And finally, we're gonna go with the traditional chocolate chip tiramisu. That's fine. That may be the best of the three. Um, I will say in no case is the cannoli shell crispy like it should be. As you saw when I stabbed it, it does not shatter. Uh, it kind of just mushes. Um, so that's unsurprising but also a little bit disappointing as far as this goes uh, i believe the cannoli this is the most expensive dessert actually second most expensive dessert um, there's a cookies to go selection that's the most expensive dessert but i think they're just cookies um, but this is this is okay um, probably popular with kids the tiramisu is fine probably a good choice for the adults who like tiramisu um, it's not the best flavor tiramisu i've ever had uh, and that chocolate dipped biscotti on the side is uh, not worth the effort um, so i mean this is pretty 
I think overall, Mama Melrose, it's it's mostly what you'd expect from an Italian restaurant at Walt Disney World. It'll please the family, please that kid. Uh, it'll please the family. You won't have any picky eaters complaining they couldn't find something to eat. Uh, but at the same time, you're in an Italian restaurant at a Disney theme park. You shouldn't come in here expecting a gourmet meal because you're certainly not going to get it. Um, I think a lot of times, especially for a phantasmic dinner package, uh, you're not going to go into into the process of booking a phantasmic dinner package with an idea of the restaurant you're going to want to book. You're going to go in there and see what's available because you want those phantasmic tickets. And so uh, you're going to take what's available. Uh, unfortunately, Mama Melrose is probably more available than most of the other restaurants that are in the Phantasmic Dinner Package. And so uh, it is what it is. Um, if you want the Phantasmic tickets, you'll get a meal that's serviceable. Not the worst one you can have at Walt Disney World, but certainly not the best. So not included with the package, but it's Kevin's first time at the Derby, so we're drinking. Kevin got the Derby cocktail, which is one of the signatures. I just got an old fashioned, but they make a mean old fashioned. Um, if I may for a second, I'll run you guys through the menu real quick. I just dipped that in Kevin's drink, by the way. <laughs> Hope you like the taste and accent of menu. Um, so the way this works, same as uh, sci-fi, but uh, appetizer or dessert and entree is what you get with the package here. It's gonna be $73, you know, cause it's Brown Derby. Um, but they have a number of good appetizers, some really good. Obviously, your best value is going to be filet. The only reason we're not getting that is because we had pictures of it already, but that's, that's your best value, folks. Um, the thing I'm sad about is there's no appetizer cob. So I'm not going to, like, the cob is 22, and even with shrimp, it's 32. It's still not a great value, so I'm kind of sad. This is going to be a somewhat sacrilegious visit to the Derby because we're not getting cob salad, and they won't do an appetizer one either, so... Uh, nonetheless, we'll see. We'll see how things go. All right. Why you really eat at the Brown Derby is the dinner rolls with the butter with the red Himalayan sea salt. But here we go. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Should play some burlesque music as I do this. Oh, there they are. Oh, I can't wait. So for the appetizer, I wanted to try something new. This is the escargot. It is still, it's still bubbling. It's hot and fresh. But now we have to photograph it. We'll see how it is after we photograph it. All right, let's try the escargot. I know there's going to be a bunch of comments. Like, Ooh, escargot. Ooh. Uh, we let this cool for a while because it was apparently like burning, burning, scalding hot. There it is. Still very hot. It's pretty good. It's usually like if you get escargot at Disney World, it's typically from the France Pavilion at Epcot, and usually that's more French preparation. Really buttery, really garlicky. This reminds me more of like if Papa John's made escargot. It's real cheap, higher quality, mind you. I'm not saying it's bad. It's real thick cheese, bacon bits. Um, it's got a lot of oil too. Um, I like it. It's just. If you're expecting, if you've had escargot from a French restaurant, you're expecting that at Brown Derby, maybe don't be. But it's it's good. It's a solid dish. Again, we didn't get the most expensive thing, but this is the uh, salmon bulebyka, which a bulebyka is a type of, uh, was it Russian? Russian, like, pierogi? Um, so this looks like it's kind of a deconstructed version, right? There is a puff pastry sort of topping. The salmon is in the middle and then there's a bed of rice. All that would usually be in the pastry in a, I guess a traditional Lebyka. I've never had one, I couldn't tell you. I'm sure someone in the comments will let us know. It looks good though, it's a nice thick piece of salmon there. Uh, a better, better look at it from this angle maybe, yeah. And then the braised short rib uh, is the other entree. Let's see how it is. Got some salmon, some rice, some pastry. There's. I guess that's arugula in the middle there.
rice is cooked well. The salmon, nice thick piece of salmon, not fishy. I'm trying to really think of what this tastes like. It's definitely a little oily, not bad. Um, it's a nice full bite. I, I like the buttery, flaky puff pastry on the top. Get a little bit of that in a bite. Salmon is cooked well. The rice is cooked well. The sauce is cilantro. It's a cilantro sauce. Um, all in all, a solid dish. Not my favorite salmon dish on proper, property, but passable. Can I try your short rib? Do you mind? Let's try a little short rib. Again, filet is going to be your best option. I love the filet here. It's great. And if you want a bad deal, I mean, the Cobb salad will knock your socks off. It's flavorful. It's tender. Nice sort of charred flavor on the exterior. Um, it's Disney short rib, though. They're all good. I think every Disney restaurant I've ever been to the short rib is... It's good. I, I would not recommend this. Again, price-wise, it's not going to be in your favor for the package, but it's a solid dish. All right, so we did the whole, you know, the usual Fantasmic dining package trick, which is one person gets an appetizer, one person gets a dessert, and you can share them, right? Um, so, of course... The signature dessert, the grapefruit cake, is here. The Bananas Foster is still here, which we've had before. Um, creme brulee, chocolate coconut cake, and a decadent chocolate cake. For dessert, we tried to pick the most shareable dessert, and I think we did a good job. This is the decadent chocolate cake, and it is quite large. There's my hand. It's pretty big. It's pretty tall. Pretty tall. I'll put it next to a. Put it next to the cup, shall we? Pretty tall piece of cake. All right, here we go. That is chocolate. From it. It's obvious. I mean, it's it's decadent, right? It's it's very rich. Real thick, real thick chocolatey icing, that dark chocolate cake. Um, it's good. It's, it's exactly what you would think it would be. Personally, like, to share, it's big enough, right? Which is great. Kids will love it. I think adults will love it, too. But their other desserts are way more interesting, a little more out of the norm, right? Grapefruit cake. They got rid of the, the um, baked Alaska, but there is a new 50th dessert, at least for a couple more months. This is the biggest, most shareable thing, and I'm sure it won't disappoint. But personally, I, I like, they make really good, interesting, very different desserts at Brown Derby. That's where I tell you, that's the direction I'd send you in, unless this sounds like what you want, right? But that would be my, my plan. All right, we have our ticket. We've been told, stay to this side by the white line and go all the way up. We'll present our ticket and we'll be led into the dining area. So the regular crowd is going to the right. We're going to go through what was Fast Pass back in the day. Fast Pass, for those of you who don't know, was a free service that let you skip the line. Uh, here we are. We're in the kind of center section. Kind of center. We have half our ticket left. It's how you, I guess, prove that you belong here. Yeah, they rip it. <laughs> and here we go. It's time for Mickey Mouse to do his thing. Doing eventually. It's this. In that. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, we hope you enjoyed this four restaurant review of the Fantasmic Dining Package. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Please subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content from all of the Disney parks around the globe. And another great way to support these dining reviews is by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society. You can do that at patreon.com slash WDWNT and membership includes all sorts of great perks. It's Tom Corliss saying thanks for watching. Have a fantastic night.